Hey folks, I'm H with Dr. Pink and today's topic is Summertime by Gershwin. It is summer, it's a perfect song for that. It's a smooth jazz, jazz version of this song here. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button to get informed when new videos are uploaded or live streams is taking place. This tutorial is going to have different chapters. Uh, the, the, the theme of the song is very simple to play. It's not so hard to play. We're going to talk about the chords. We're going to talk about um, playing the melody and adding some improv improvisation and also improvisation over the entire tune. And it's going to be a long tutorial. Check the chapters in the description box below. I'm uh, first going to show you the song if you don't know it by now. So this is the melody. Now we add some improvisation. Melody. Some improvisation. Improvisation. Also play around the theme. Also improvisation with scatting. What is scatting? like that it's gonna be a really cool different aspect of jazz guitar smooth jazz guitar the theme of the song is the probably the simple thing of it is really simple a beginner can play it, so it's this tutorial is for beginners intermediate and semi pros all together you can learn uh, really a lot of stuff in this tutorial so let's get started with the melody and some first explanations about the song um, Maybe first the sound settings. I have just chosen a Roland Jazz Chorus amp, a lot of reverb. That's a typical jazz sound playing on the neck humbucker. See, there's a lot of reverb on that one. It's a typical jazzy sound. If you want to have it more jazzy, just put down the treble, maybe three quarters. If you want. I'm more a fan of a bright jazzy sound. I don't know why, I just like that more. But if you have an original jazzy, just put down. Same thing. Yeah. Good. The song is in A minor, so let's get started. Okay, guys, well, let's first talk about the theme. Um, we are in the A minor scale or A minor pentatonics in the root position. And the whole thing works in the A minor scale here. Five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven, four, five, seven, five, six, eight, five, seven, nine. So this will be the scale. It's really a lot of reverb. <laughs> yeah, but that's how it is. Good. So the melody is really simple. Um, we start here. Five, 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 seven, seven, five, 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 seven, five, seven, five, five, seven, two, three, four, one, da, 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 one two, three, four. Then comes the same thing again. Well, now it goes here. Five, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, seven, length to four. That will be the melody of the first part. It's really simple to play. Everybody can play that. Even a beginner. Let's play with the backing track. Now 
seconds, same thing again. And now comes the ending. Let's check this out. Second part is again f begins as the first part. One it begins on four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. and now in the second part it goes here the fourth fret on the F sharp. And now comes the ending. The ending is a little bit tricky. This is so-called quarter triplets. What are quarter triplets? This is the beat. Da, ga, ga, da. So this is three notes per two beats. Da, ga, 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 ga. That's this. So, so seven, five, seven, seven, five, five, then seven, five. So da, ga, ga, da. These were the quarter triplets. Seven, five, seven, seven, five, five, seven, five, seven. That's the ending then. Yeah, that will be this. So we're going to play the whole theme now. And I really played extremely straight ahead the theme. Of course, nobody will play it exactly that way. That's why I'm not too much into the rhythm here. It's just a guiding line. You, you can be free in the interpretation of the melody. If you're a solo artist, you can interpret it the, the way you want. If you're playing together with others, of course, you need to stick to the rhythm of the guy who arranged the track. But in this case, I really keep it extremely simple. Um, just a, but just guiding. <laughs> really simple. I'm going to give you an example how you play the melody more freely, just as an inspiration. It really has does not have to be exactly, so it's a little bit stiff as I played it, but it's, well, it was the really beginner's version. Now let's do a version which somehow is a bit more relaxed. I'm going more with the music, not so stiff. So that will be the melody, more or less, how it is played, either the stiff way, just straight ahead, and the, these taps are available uh, for those who are really difficulties to make a own interpretation, or the more relaxed, just go with the music. The next step now would be to um, adapt, or there's a lot of space in between, and there you can start to build up. So let's say the first part you play the melody. And then you want to build it up more and then you add some already start soloing in between. So let's do that now. How you do that? Um, well, it's just follow your heart, <laughs> probably. Um, you really need to know the melody by heart. And then start to play and in, in betweens, 
you start to add little fillings with A minor pentatonics, A blues, or if you're a advanced player, you also can follow the chords more. We're going to go more into that uh, in a second. Let's just first play the melody. As an example now. Probably now. Then always come back to the melody. Go back to the melody. See what I did now? I played the melody and in between I just played stuff with the pentatonics. But you need to have the melody going on in your head that you know exactly where you are and then you stick to the really important parts of the melody. And that's the main thing here, which you can do when you so-called uh, fill-ins or add-ons. You put in fill-ins in between where you have space or if you want to already get more into soloing, you start to dissolve the melody and get into soloing. And that's the way it is done. Yeah. Good. So now the second thing is now the chords. Let's uh, check out the chords. They're written in the description box below or in the tabs you find the exact chord chart of the chords which are used. I'm going to show them. It's basically it's a minor blues. We start with A minor. Summertime. I can sing it if you want. <laughs> Summertime. Then comes E7 sharp. Then when the living is easy so a minor to e7 sharp 9 a minor you have the ring finger in the fifth or three strings middle finger on the e string in the fifth a string is damped summertime e7 sharp 9 7 6 7 8 and the living is go back to a minor easy and then comes the a7 uh, flat 13 is like this. Fifth, fifth, sixth, sixth with the pinky. See? And then we have a D minor. It's like this. Um, middle finger in the fifth fret, index third, um, bar here with the ring finger in the fifth. Uh, Fisher jumping, and then comes the F13. We are in the first on the E string, first on the D string, second on the G string, pinky on the third, F13. And then we go to back to the E7 sh uh, sharp 9. So let's play the first chord part. Summertime, three. and the living is easy. Fisher jumping and the cotton is high. So that will be the first part. Then comes the same thing again. Oh, your daddy's rich uh, and your mama is good looking. Then we go to a, a D9, five, four, and and with the ring finger here in the fifth. D9. And then comes the ending with C, normal C, so harsh, little to A minor, little baby, and then D. This is the fifth, four, index in the second, um, middle finger in the third. D to E to A minor to E7 sharp nine. That's the whole thing. I'm gonna pl I'm gonna play with the track. Summer time and the living is easy. Fisher jumping and the cotton is high. Sorry for the bad singing, I'm really not a singer. 
Oh, your daddy is rich And your mom is good looking So hush, little baby Don't you cry Yeah, if you want to play it funky Just do it really simple um, yeah probably not for everybody <laughs> but uh, from the from the view of a jazz guitar play is really simple to play um, what is important on this whole thing um, basically that you follow more or less the melody with the chords which is done here with these these chords yeah uh, if you want to have the chord ch charts, they're available as tabs in the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Just follow the link in the description box below. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the theme is uh, written down there if you have problems following what I'm talking about here. Good. Now we're getting into the cooler stuff. <laughs> the improvisation. Uh, how do we play this? Since this is more or less a minor blues, you can act as in a minor blues using just a minor scale. Of course. But since we are playing some out of jazz guitar, we want a little bit, you can either follow all chords, but it, that's not really cool on this track. I would suggest a mixture between following the chords and uh, playing the blues scale. Yeah, so. This is the blues scale, A minor blues scale. Good. Um, what you can do, I mean, you need to really know the form by heart and the chords by heart. Where are you exactly to really follow the chords? At the beginning, of course, we have two spots where we really interact with the three spots or we interact with the chords. We have there on the A minor seven, we just play blues scale. On the E seven sharp nine, this G sharp here should be somehow uh, paid attention to. So if you play something, now comes the E7 sharp 9, you go on this note here, G sharp. And when it switches to A7 uh, sharp uh, flat 13, the C sharp is the note which you want to target. So. Isn't it? So let's try this. See, we have the G sharp here and the C sharp just above in the sixth fret. Let's try with the track. G sharp. Now comes C sharp. Then you can go back to normal. And now at the end comes again the E7 sharp 9. There we do the, the G sharp as well. Really simple. So Then comes again the first pot. And then when it comes to D7, D9, the F sharp is the note either here in the 4th fret or here in the 7th fret. So these two notes are the ones which you really want to target if you pay attention to those chords. And the rest you can be more or less free with blue scale, with your blues licks, whatever you want to play. But when those chords come, target those notes. I said I'm going to play a chorus now for you where you see that, how it is done. Um, 
the easy way. I mean, you can make it more complex, of course, but we want to keep it simple that you have a chance on following all what I'm talking about here. So let's do this now. G sharp. C sharp. And G sharp, go. G sharp. C F sharp. And now we're free again. G sharp. Now we're going to do a second really works easy. I'm going to do a second row now, which uh, I'm going to go more into bluesy licks. I'm going to not explain the bluesy licks so much. You can play anything you like, but pay attention that you hit the target notes at the right spot. That's really important. I'm going to go to the second part now. It makes more intense. By the way, I'm going to play a full setting of my playing, how I would play the song at the end of the tutorial. <laughs> so make sure you stay to the end, listen to my version of the whole thing, where I don't hold back so much. Good. So these were the target notes. Now we need something to spice the whole thing up. It's still a little bit static, so we use octaves. Octaves, you just pay and play any note of the blue scale as octaves with the pinky and the ring f uh, index finger. And octaves I would suggest on the high two notes where the pink is either on the E on the B string and then the lower active is three frets away. See? You can practice a little. And what to make it sound jazzy? You just slide in. Slide in and then it's really cool. Let's do that now. By the way, if you miss one of those target notes, that's not the end of the world. I mean, you don't have to do it all the time, but this way you show that you follow the chords and that's what you want to have in this genre, somehow following the chords. You can also play the A minor scale, of course, play like runs. In this case, if you want to play jazzy runs, make sure you can play the scale. <laughs> has 60 notes in this tempo and then you're pretty cool to go. Yeah. And then once you have the speed, which is it's, uh, 80 BPM, it's not really hard, and then you just Move in with scales if you want and mix it all up.
You can also, of course, you can also play the pentatonics as a run. Also works nicely on this one. It's all null problemo, null problemo, ne? Ich spreche jetzt mal eine Runde Deutsch hier. Ne? Ich bin zwar nicht ein Deutsch, ich bin zwar ein Schweiz, aber es ist null problemo. Um, then you, the main thing is like with like cooking, you know. These are ingredients we have: the pentatonics, we have the blues scale, we have the scale, we have the target notes, we have runs, we have the octaves. These are the ingredients. Now you put it all in a pot, mix it, <laughs> and then make something spicy, nice, sort of. And that's what it's all about. The trick is not to play too much and to play what you really want and what you hear. So how do you achieve that you only play what you hear? That's really simple. To play what you hear is something which is basically the... No, it's that's the main thing in improvisation. How do you learn that or how you make sure that you really play what you hear? If you can sing what you play, then it's you play what you hear. What does that mean? You can practice this. Um, this is called scatting. You don't have to do the scatting, but you can do... I mean, I don't have a little range. I'm really a terrible singer, I know that. I don't want to have any comments how bad I sing. I know it. I'm not really good, but um, that's not the point. The point is that you hear, you are able to sing what you hear. So... You can start with the pentatonics, try to visualize the pentatonic, maybe in the train where you have to wait and try to hear how it sounds just by visualizing the fretboard and not playing the fretboard. And then... That's the way the whole thing works. And um, I remember when I tried at first, for me it just worked, I don't know why, but it just worked. Maybe if you, if you have difficulties with it, you have just have to practice it. Play the first note, and do next one, and so on, and practice that. And then once you're comfortable with it, you can start to play simultaneously what you sing. Just an example, and um, that's the way it works. And if you have problems to target or to to hear what you're playing, it slows you down. You, that's just the current level which you have in hearing what you play. I mean, probably you can move your fingers faster, but you don't hear what you play. I mean, my teacher once said that to me. I was really uh, <laughs> embarrassed when he said that to me, but he was right. And I really worked hard to hear what I play, and that's what it's all about in any genre, especially in jazz or smooth jazz. But in any genre, if you don't hear what you play, it's, you just don't make music, just bang around on the guitar or whatever. And if it turns out that you only play two notes during a whole course of soloing, and that's the exactly what you want, that's the way to go. Miles Davis was a good example for that one to really do that. Um, play few notes exactly at the spot he wanted them to, to sound. That's what it is in jazz or smooth jazz. You have to hear what you play and all this stuff which I show now with chords, the form, the melody, they just help you to feel the music more and feel the song. It's not that you have to first and I'm playing, I'm not playing the chords. This is all going on at the same time simultaneously. That's what it's all about in music, and you should never forget it any level you're playing. If you're at the beginning of the guitar journey, that's 
put your focus on these things as well, not only to get fast and to move around the full fretboard. It's not so important than hearing what you play. Good. I'm coming to the end slowly. What more to say? Um, if you want to download the backing track and the tabs for this tutorial, it's available at HB Crazy Guitar Academy. Link is in the description. And I'm going to play a version now for you to see as a summary of everything, if this uh, software really works. <laughs> and... Yo, um, that's more and more to say what me and Dr. Pink wanted to say. I'm going to play now. Summertime for you as a... Sh ex uh, like a full version. Well, not the whole song, just the melody and the good improvisation. That's, that get an idea at where we want to go. 